Chop, chop, motherfucker. Alright guys, it is time to do something about the fenders for this bike. The front fender has already been chopped. So you guys can't crucify me for chopping it more. Because whoever did this didn't do a very good job. Now the back fender, I had it on my eBay page for a while now. People in the comments of a different video were saying, please don't chop this bike, don't chop it. And then some other awesome people were like, chop, chop, chop. So that's what I'm doing, guys. I am chopping these fenders up. You know, that's what people do with these fenders, guys. They chop them. Someone already did that with this one. I think I can chop off just a little bit more. We've got a lot of work to do with this rear one. So let's get it on the bike and put, the, put my taillight on there, the seat, and kind of mock it up and see how much we want to cut off of this thing. All right, I'm going to bolt it in place. And then here's my tail light that I'm using, just super simple round brake light tail light thing. I don't know where it's gonna go. I'm probably gonna have to make like some kind of custom bracket because obviously that wouldn't work. I want this look right here. That's the look I want. Now let's get the seat on here. I wanna use these threaded inserts here in this hole for my new tail light. I'm gonna run the wire through there and then make some kind of bracket that will actually thread into these threaded inserts. So it looks like I'm gonna end up cutting it right about here. I'm gonna take some painter's tape and tape a line right about where I wanna cut this thing. Honda purists out there better stop watching now. This is gonna trigger you guys. This is a trigger warning, Honda purists. Just a fender. What we're gonna do is take the piece I just cut off here, put it right back on where it goes there, and then take a Sharpie, and I'm going to draw an outline. Gonna make my second cut now. Basically it right there. On second thought, I think it would actually look better without this piece right here. So I'm gonna just draw a line outlining the back of the frame. Cut that piece right off. Now, for the front fender, I'm gonna make a line at the very center of the fender. I'm gonna measure off of that. This side is measuring 13 and a quarter. And this side is 13. We're gonna go to 10 inches. Then I'm gonna take my XJ750 fender, line it up on my line there, and just draw around it. Just like that. That's gonna be about it. That's pretty, pretty short fender. Kind of going for the Bonneville Grambler look, like this look right here. Chop, chop. Before I cut it, I'm gonna make sure that it's like exactly the same as the other side. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Okay, there's my chopped fenders. Now I'm gonna use the grinder and just clean up the edges a little bit. Now I have to remove all of the rust and crap off of the bottom side of these fenders. For that, I'm going to use a wire wheel on my angle grinder. Let's get it. That is quick work. Okay, 
Okay, I got most of the rust off, but the top of the chrome is still too smooth for paint to stick. So I'm gonna switch to a flap disc sander and rough up this chrome. Now I'm going to hit this stuff with my palm sander with 120 grit sandpaper. A little bit of rust on here, so I'm going to use my drill, the wire wheel, to get that taken care of. Now I'm going to hand sand these fenders with some 220 grit sandpaper and a little scotch bright pad to start with just to get those hard to reach areas. Ready for paint. I've got a new microfiber cloth, some paint thinner and a spray bottle. And I'm gonna spray these parts down, wipe them off. Let it dry, and then we're gonna hit this stuff with some primer. Okay, it's time for some primer, and I'm gonna be using this rusty metal primer. This is stuff is great for spots that you just can't get all the rust off of, like the underside of this rear fender. I've used this stuff before and it works surprisingly well. And for everywhere else that I did get the rust off of, I'm using self etching primer. This primer is great for painting bare metal or previously chromed metal. Chromed metal is really hard to get anything to stick to, but self etching primer etches into the metal and it creates a great primed surface. I definitely recommend these primers and if you wanna check these out yourself, hit the link up here or down in the description. I'll fetch in primer. I'm gonna wait like 10 minutes and then do a second coat of primer. It's been about half an hour, the primer is dry, so now I'm gonna hit it with the color. I'm using this VHT roll bar and chassis paint. It's a good chemical resistant paint. So let's get a nice thin coat on and then we'll get another. Okay, now it's time for coat number two. We're looking good. It's the next day and it looks like the fenders are dry. Paint came out really nice and glossy. I want to do something a little bit different with the front fender here. I want to kind of do similar thing as my gas tank with the, the wood grain look. I'd like to put a strip of wood grain right down the center with silver on each side of the wood grain to make it look like there's a wood inlay on this front fender. I need to make sure it's centered, so I'm gonna go ahead and mark the center. All right, so that's the center. So I'm gonna put my tape on the center, and I want it a little bit wider than that, so I'm gonna use a couple more strips of tape here. And then I'm just gonna eyeball this part. I wanna leave a gap for my silver pin stripe. Then I'm just gonna mask off the rest of the fender because I don't wanna get silver on the rest of it. Normally I wouldn't eyeball something like this, but I did just get my eyeballs calibrated and they're working optimally, so I trust them to make the perfect pin stripes. Just gonna hit my area that I'm pinstriping with 
some very quick 220 grit sandpaper black paint just to make sure that the silver paint will stick to that. Now I'm just going to clean that with some paint thinner. Okay, for the silver, I'm using this Duplicolor Silver Caliper Enamel with ceramic. It's a good hard paint. I'm gonna do multiple thin coats here. I don't know why I'm even hanging it. It would be easier to just paint it on the ground. It's been about 20 minutes and I think the silver is dry enough to go ahead and pull off this tape. Tape definitely left some adhesive on the paint so I'm gonna have to sand all that down to get that crap off. This is the cool one. Okay, it's been a few hours and the silver is definitely dry. So I'm gonna go ahead and tape it off. There we go. Now I'm gonna lightly just sand the black a little bit with some 220 grit sandpaper just to make sure my brown paint sticks to it. Okay, now I'm gonna wipe that down with some paint thinner. All right, that's good for the first coat. Now it's time for a second coat. Time for the third and final coat. Okay, it's been about 15, 20 minutes and this paint's mostly dry. So now I'm gonna just let this dry a lot more. It's been about five hours and the brown paint is dry. So I'm gonna hit it a little bit of 220 grit sandpaper because when I was doing my gas tank, I found out that the stain sticks and soaks in a lot better if you sand down the paint a little bit first. I also might as well go ahead and sand down the black too to try and get the adhesive from the masking tape off. Okay, I got it good and roughed up. So I'm gonna get a little bit of paint thinner and just wipe it, clean it off. Okay, now before I do the stain, I'm gonna cover up the silver again, <laughs> just so that I don't stain the silver. Got my special walnut wood stain. Probably all I need right there. You don't need much to get the wood grain effect. And then just gonna brush it. Basically just have to keep brushing it. See, it's starting to look like wood grain. Just gotta keep brushing it as it dries and you'll get that nice wood grain effect. It will actually dry on top of that spray paint and it kind of soaks into the spray paint too. It's pretty cool. So I'm going to go ahead and pull off my tape. That looks pretty cool. It's going to look even better after I clear coat. Well, there were just some deep scratches that I could not sand out of the fender and I don't think clear coat will fix. So I'm gonna go ahead and give the fenders another coat of black. I've got my wood grain and silver taped over. Here we go.
been about 20 minutes and the black is pretty much dry. So I'm gonna pull off this tape now. Oh yeah. All right, now it's time for some clear coat on this rear fender. I'm just gonna use this uh, VHT gloss clear wheel paint. It'll do a pretty good job, hopefully. Ten minutes later, time for another coat of clear coat. Bug just landed on it. All right, that's it. Woo. It's finally done. The fenders came out really good, and I, I happy with how it came out. It actually looks like wood. And I might do a little wet sanding and polish these up because there is a tiny bit of orange peel in my clear coat. Uh, I don't know what happened there, but we'll get it all fixed up. The bike's starting to come together. You know, this really ties it all in with the gas tank and it's just, it's looking cool. So hopefully you guys are liking the series. Hopefully you like how the fenders came out. They're super short, so I know it might offend some people, but it's gonna look awesome. I can't wait to get this stuff back on the bike. It'll be very soon guys, there's not much left to do. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss out on me reassembling this bike. So you guys will get to see the finished product. It's gonna be freaking awesome. I'm so excited. Hit that like button if you enjoyed it and feel free to use this method and ship, post a picture of your results with the hashtag woodification. I would love to see how the uh, wood effect comes out for you guys. You can use different kinds of stain, different kinds of spray paint, so many options to get really creative. And I'll see you guys next time with the side covers. That's gonna be the next video. So I'll see you then. Peace out.